This presentation is about habitats. It is part of the Nyawada. This is Malta. Inside our three islands, there are many different kinds of places for nature. These are called habitats, and inside a habitat, plants and animals live. In this picture of our islands, which is the biggest habitat you can see? Got it? The sea, of course. Let's have a look at some of our habitats and the creatures and plants that live in them. There's a lot of farmland in our islands. Farmland is not all a natural habitat. The soil and the shape of the land on which the soil lies is natural. But what happens to the soil and the plants in it are controlled by people. Here's a bird that likes to spend the day walking over fields looking for insects to eat. It's a yellow backtail. And here's one that has a spider in his beak. Wagtails have long tails that wag up and down when they walk. This couple of sparrows have made their nests in a farmhouse because it is close to fields where they can find insects and grubs to feed their young. Just look at that juicy grub the father has caught. We must look after birds in our fields because they are beautiful and because we need them to control insects. Between fields there is another smaller habitat. Can you tell which it is? That's right, it's the rubble walls. Rubble walls are habitats for many animals. They find food in the farmland and at the same time they need a place to shelter. Here are three of them. Hedgehogs spend the day inside the wall and come out at night. Skinks do the opposite. They sun themselves on the warm stones of the rubble wall and slip inside when there's danger and at night. Snails come out when it rains and they hide from the sun when it's hot because they need to be wet all the time. So they just stay in the cracks between the rubble walls. Here's another habitat that's very important for nature. Sometimes farmland is not used and wildflowers grow instead of vegetables. These small pockets of land are very important for our bees and all the other pollinators because wildflowers give them pollen and nectar. Here are some common wildflowers. Aren't they lovely? Just look at all the insects feeding on these wildflowers. And they're all in abandoned land. Where would they find food without these flowers? Soil is a habitat that we usually forget about because it's underground. But this habitat is where most food chains start. Soil in Malta is not very deep. Look at this photo and you can see how shallow our soil is. There's a lot of wind in Malta and the soil blows away. If we have more trees, their roots will keep the soil from blowing away. Here's just one of the thousands of animals that live in the soil. It's an earthworm. Earthworms need soil as they spend all their lives in it. But they also help the soil because they pull leaves down from the top of the soil and they eat them quietly in their burrow. When earthworms go up to get leaves, sometimes birds pick them to eat. So there's a food chain. Our next habitat is rocky land. We have a lot of this because much of our soil blew away into the sea in the past. This is one of our most beautiful habitats because a lot of flowering plants grow in it. Like these ones. So many shapes, sizes and colours.
Rocky land is the habitat of the stone chat, a little bird that migrates to Malta each winter and stays in rocky land perched on top of a rock or a plant looking for insects to eat. The cat snake lives in rocky land too. It is called a cat snake because the pupils of its eyes are slit, like a cat's. Butterflies like this beautiful yellow one visit flowers in rocky land, and spiders like this wolf spider hides under rocks. Can you see the babies of the wolf spider on its back? They are safe on her back because she's a predator. Urban means built up. Even though there are many buildings in the urban habitat, we can still find nature. The sparrow is one of the birds that can live in many habitats and it likes our ventilators because it can find food in our streets and gardens to feed its young. Some schools in the urban habitat have gardens. This one is a school in Birkara. They planted this garden for urban nature. Like, for example, this warbler. Here we can see the male and female birds, and they make nests in our gardens. You can see this bird quite easily if you keep your eyes open to nature. The urban habitat is also good for lizards. In fact, you will find more lizards in people's gardens and in parks than you will find in the countryside. Lizards eat small insects like ants, which also love our gardens. Here's one carrying a seed head, looking rather like a Father Christmas. Wetlands are a very rare habitat. In fact, they are so rare that they are protected. This is the wetland at Adira, and it is a nature reserve. There is another one at Simar, at Salina, and at Marsa Shlok. Birds migrating in spring and in autumn stop at our wetlands to eat, rest, and sometimes to stay in winter. Look at all the different types. Now, what do they find for food? They have a whole food chain to eat. If you're a bird that eats plants, there is alga or tassel weed growing in the water. You can see it here. If you eat animals, there are shrimps to eat. And if you like bigger prey, there are fish that eat the shrimps. Gosh, how full of life this habitat is. Some of our valleys become wetlands in winter, when the rain gathers at the bottom for a short season. The animals that live in this kind of water have a very different life cycle. They start their life in the water, and in a short time before the water runs dry, they need to grow and change into adults. Can you tell what this is? It's changing. There. Did you guess? It's a dragonfly. How about these little ones? Do you know what they are? They are feeding on alga growing in the stream. What will they change into? Frogs. Those were tadpoles. They have a tail when they're in the water and then the tail starts disappearing. Legs come out and they turn into the shape of a frog. Malta is made up of three main islands. This means that we have a lot of cliffs and shores. These are not easy habitats to live in because of the winds and waves always hitting them. But amazingly, 
nature lives in these habitats too. We have two kinds of cliff. The one on the left shows gentle slopes with many large rocks. The one on the right shows a very high rock face. Plants that live on our cliffs need to be good at living with sea salt blowing through them. They usually have thick leaves where they store water. On the left here you can see the endemic Maltese rock centauri. Endemic means it only grows in Malta. This is our national plant. And on the right we have the caper plant, which has lovely sweet-smelling flowers. The blue rock thrush's favourite habitat is clifftops, where it sings a beautiful song that you can hear echoing around the cliffs. This is our national bird. Our cliffs are also special places for the shearwater, a bird that lives its life out at sea and only comes in to shore when it is nesting. Woodland is a habitat everyone loves because it is made up of trees. Trees are lifesavers. They make the air we breathe and they are home to so many animals. The oldest trees in Malta are oak trees, like this one at Busquet. This oak tree is hundreds of years old. Mushrooms grow in woodlands because they like damp, shadowy places. Here are three different kinds of mushrooms. Our smallest mammal lives in woodland too. It's not a mouse, even though it looks like one. A shrew is not related to mice. And on the right we have a weasel. Both these animals are very hard to see. Woodlands are great places for birds. Large birds that catch animals like rabbits, like the one in the middle, and others that eat fruit and berries. We end this tour of our habitats with the one that makes Malta an island, the sea. There are so, so many living things in the sea. Let's start with the Neptune grass. It's a very important plant to the seabed because its roots are like hooks that keep the sand in place. Many young sea animals are born amongst the blades of this grass. They can hide from predators here in its thick green carpet. The octopus is one of the more famous animals that live in our sea. It's a very intelligent and interesting animal. If you stop thinking of catching it to eat, you can spend hours of joy just watching its behaviour and the way it changes colour and shape and how it moves and eats. There are so many other creatures that live in the sea. Here are some of them. You may easily meet these on our shores. In our last picture we look at Malta in three colours. Look at it carefully. Can you see what little of our islands we have left for nature's habitats? The bright green there shows that we have only 16% natural habitat left. People cannot live without nature. So let us make sure we keep all the natural habitats we have left and make sure not to build any more in the countryside. What do you think? <laughs>